Hi, I'm Mark Peterson with the Family Handy Band. Today we're going to be pouring a slab right here behind me. We're going to show you everything from setting up the forms, installing the rebar, finishing, and even sealing it after it's done. Let's get started. For this small slab, we built the form first and set it in place. We marked the corners with spray paint and then pulled it out of the way and removed the sod in that area. Secure the form with stakes placed approximately three feet apart. Check to make sure the form stays square and level as you go. Screws work better than nails to fasten the stakes to the form. Use a recip saw to cut the stakes flush with the top edge. Level the grade to the bottom of the form. Depending on the soil conditions and climate, you may have to dig out some of the existing soil and replace it with a compactable gravel or crushed stone. Make sure to knock down any high spots on the outside of the form, or it could interfere with the screed board. We cut our rebar with a portable bandsaw, but a recip saw or a circular saw equipped with a metal cutting blade would also work. Make a rebar grid no bigger than 4 feet by 4 feet. Place the rebar somewhere between 3 and 12 inches from the edge of the form. Hold the grid together with metal tie wire. We got her done just in time. Here comes the truck. It helps to wet down the soil on hot sunny days. This will slow down the curing of the concrete and extend the finishing time. But don't spray so much that you get standing water, which could seep up to the surface of the concrete and weaken the slab. Spread the concrete out with a shovel or rake. Pull the excess concrete back with a straight 2x4 screed board. Go back over the same area one more time, sliding the screed board back and forth as you pull. The back and forth motion fills in voids and brings cream to the surface which increases workability. Work your way back in reachable sections. Pull the excess concrete off the back of the form. Let it sit and remove it after it hardens. Push the bull float across the surface and jiggle it on the return pass. This will push down more of the aggregate and bring additional cream to the top. Run the float in more than one direction if possible. When using any concrete finishing tools, it's important to make sure the leading edge is lifted up slightly as you push or pull. After floating the slab, it's time to smooth it with a trowel. We're using a wide Fresno trowel that can be attached to a pole, but a hand trowel will work fine if you can reach the entire surface. The surface doesn't need to be completely flat. Just concentrate on removing the lines left by the bull float. This slab will get a broom finish which will hide the smaller imperfections. It's important to wash your tools within a few minutes after you're done using them. Round off the edges with an edging tool. The concrete will be drier at this point, so keep a hand trowel handy to direct the surface cream to any voids that need filling and to smooth out any lines left by the edger. 
pulling a broom across the surface creates small grooves, making it less slippery. If concrete dries too fast, it won't be as strong. To slow down the curing process, we sprayed ours with Quickcrete's Cure and Seal. Sprinkling the slab with water a couple times a day for a week should have the same effect. All that's left is to wait 24 hours and take off your forms, put a diamond blade on your circ saw, and make a relief cut right down the middle about an inch deep. If this pad was any bigger, we'd probably want to make a couple more. And that's so if case there's any little bit of settling, uh, it'll naturally crack where those relief cuts are. And uh, that's all there is to it. All that work and I didn't even get my hands dirty.